So in the last couple lessons, we've looked at creating the database within MySQL, creating a table within MySQL, and now inserting data within MySQL. So in this lesson, we're going to look at how to pull that data back out of the database that we've worked so hard to create and set up. Now, there are going to be a couple lessons on this. The first lesson that I'm doing on this particular video is going to be on how to actually just pull the data out of our database. We're going to then continue on a little bit more advanced and actually put the data into text boxes where we can navigate each one of our records through there and then eventually we're going to make it so that we can update and change those records that are in the text boxes and anytime we hit a button it will submit it to the database so it's kind of like we have a working front end to our database all within our page so we're going to go ahead now and work on and focus on how to actually pull or extract this information out of our database and I've got the three different fields, topic, name, and attendance, and I've got two records currently in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code that we're going to use. And So I'm going to maximize the page that I've been working with. This is the page here, the insert form from the last lesson. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this code. I'll do a control A to highlight it all, control C to copy it, and we're going to go ahead and do file new. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that page in here. And we'll save it as, save as, we'll call it my data one the reason why I'm going to put a one after it is because I'll have a couple different pages that I'm going to create similar to this. So mydata1.php. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now you can see all the color coding that goes with the Notepad++ is now in effect. So let's go ahead and get rid of the things that we no longer need. I'm not going to use the form any longer, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then I also do not need this if is set for the post button because we're not working with a form. So I'm going to remove all of line 6 now. And then at the very end, I had the closing, there it is, closing curly brace. I'm going to remove that one as well. That was part of the if is set. So this is what the code should look like within our page. So I've got my connection that happens first, and then I just had the code in there. For some reason, I couldn't make the connection. We get the error. I still have that going through my page. I could remove it if, uh, and you know what? Let me go ahead and uh, re actually I'll leave it in there because if for whatever reason the database is unreachable, it's kind of nice to be able to know that whenever we're working with the page, it, it's not accessible. So I'll leave that code in there. I also have the MySQL select DB. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there as well. I'm just going to move it up a line. That's the connection to the database snippets that we had, and we're going to use our connection on. I'm going to move this line up as well. On line 11, we've got our SQL statement. This is going to change. So I'm going to remove everything that's in those double quotes. And we're going to insert now a new um, SQL statement. What it's going to end up being is just basically a select statement. So it's, we'll type in select. And then I'm going to use the asterisk to select everything from my database or my table that's in the database. So I'm going to put it now from. And then the name of my table is lectures. So select everything, or the asterisk is the wild card for everything, from the table lectures. And so that's the easy, quick statement that we have there. On line number 12 now, I'm going to move that up here. Line 12, it says MySQL query, and we're going to go ahead and run the SQL statement. We're going to still use the connection. What I'm going to do a little bit differently is because there's going to be a lot of results, I'm going to need to store all of those results into something. So it makes it a little easier to work with if I can put all of that data into a variable. So I'm just going to create a variable in front of this and call it my data. And we'll set it equal to the results that come back from this statement. So it was just a quick little change there to store it all in there. Now that I've got that set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to create a loop that's going to fetch all of the information from basically it's, it's going to be held within my data. And so there's a new function we'll use, it's called MySQL fetch array, and it will fetch everything out of this variable that I created here called my data. And we'll use a loop, and the reason why we're going to use a loop is because it's going to need to repeat the code and print out every record that we have until the array is no longer or until it's empty. So I'll show you how to set that up. We're going to type in while, and I've got the while command. And since it's a condition, we're going to need the two parentheses there to, for our condition to test if it's true. And what I'm going to set in here is I'm going to create a new uh, variable to work with. I'm going to call it record because it's going to be each one of our records. And we're going to set it equal to the MySQL 
fetch array and this is going to be a function so I'm going to put the two parentheses after that and I like to have a little spacing between my equal signs so I'll go ahead and put the spacing there so it's going to equal the this new function that we've got here mysql fetch array now what are we going to fetch what's going to be the parameter we're going to fetch well I want to fetch, fetch my data that I have which is going to hold everything from my uh, SQL statement so we'll put in here dollar sign my data and there we go and so that'll hold that in there so now that's my loop condition I'm gonna have to start my loop off with a curly brace and end it with the closing curly brace and then within the loop itself we're gonna echo out all of the records that we've been able to obtain so what I'll do is just type in an echo statement and then let's go ahead and echo out dollar sign record and there's going to be a lot of things within this record there's going to be the three fields that I had I have in my table I have a topic a name and an attendance field so I need to distinguish which one we're going to work with so I'm going to put the square brackets and single quotes and I want to work with first the topic field so if I go ahead now and after this I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of this and I'm going to also echo out a break tag because I want each one of them to have space or, or a line break between them. So we'll go ahead and put a break tag in here like that. I'm going to go ahead and save my page and I want to see how this is going to work. So let's go over to the actual web browser and I'm going to pull that up. Let's go ahead and make the pages so they're side by side here. All right. I go back, refresh my page, and there's my there my data one.php. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, and you'll see what ends up happening is I've got PHP and then MySQL. Those were the two topics from the two records that I had in there. So they're showing up for us now, each one of them, and they're on separate lines. So now if I want to display the entire record itself, I can go ahead and add the other field names that are in my database. And so over here, back on line 14, I'll maximize this. I'm going to go ahead and append to it or concatenate to it a space and then the next record and that just puts this concatenating a space puts it so that instead of the records being displayed side by side there's a space in between them so I'm going to basically add to it the space and then add to it now my next field name so I'll go ahead and put in their dollar sign record and then the two square brackets in the two square brackets my next field name which is name and we're going to go ahead and concatenate in another space and then we're going to go ahead and concatenate in the last field name that I have within my record so let's see that's going to be dollar sign record two square brackets and inside the square brackets two single quotes and the last field name that I have is attendance alright so let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and view our page so I'll go back to this refresh it now you can see that it's got the entire record. It has the topic field, it has the name field, and then it also has the attendance field all displayed within my page. And so now in the next lesson what I want to work on is actually taking my data and displaying it into a table layout just in case if all you want to do is just display the information from your database. This is not going to be necessarily acceptable for most people so we'll go ahead and put it in the next lesson into a table that looks and organizes it a little bit better.